William Tabanel is a Los Angeles-based sound designer and re-recording mixer with his own company, Tab Sound Design. William has over 23 years of experience in the post-sound world. Tabano has worked in over 150 features and shorts for such clients as Showtime, AFI, HBO, Sony Pictures, Lakeshore Entertainment, Gravitas Entertainment, and many more. He's also worked on countless commercials for Nike, Sky Zone, Gerber, and others. He's worked as a sound designer and re-recording mixer for games, music videos, record albums, and short and feature films. His goal is to stir up the listener's emotions by creating dynamic and clear mixes. Here now is William Tabanow. Will, it's, it's great to have you here, and I'm, I'm sure our students will be thrilled to hear many of the wonderful stories and things you're about to tell them. But uh, as usual, they love hearing how people get into business. And I'm sure uh, from what I've heard from you and from others, you have a very interesting past. Would you mind telling us the, the story of how you got into you, where you are now? Well, it all started around the age of 10. Uh, my brother had been playing drums for a couple of years. And, you know, we obviously needed someone else in the house to, uh, to, to help crank it up and, and, you know, and have fun and all that. So I ended up picking up the guitar. And uh, then we played in a band together for a little bit. And uh, since he was three years older than me, I was a little too young to you know, uh, play in clubs or play parties and, and places like that. So um, I ended up starting an, uh, my own band. You know, we, we as a band, we started talking about, hey, we should start recording. Uh, but nobody was in the band was could record. So I was like, well, you know, maybe I'll buy a four track recorder, which was kind of the thing. And uh, so I bought a, a four track recorder or Tascam. And um, I became the default guy. I started recording, you know, little demos here and there, some uh, song ideas that we had. And then in high school, this was, yeah, and it's, it was like a, maybe junior year. Um, our band hired an engineer, an outside engineer, and we went to a bigger studio. So this was like, this was the, the moment, you know, the ah moment when I walked into this nice studio called Rivendell in Houston, Texas, because that's where I grew up. And, you know, I saw the big board and went, I was scared when I saw that board. I was like, well, I'm, I'm good on my four track. <laughs> we'll stick to the four track. I was going, yeah, no, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, obviously I wasn't recording the band, but I was, you know, I kind of looked at it and went, hmm, you know, and yeah. And, the guy who recorded us, his name is uh, Brian Garcia. He uh, ended up being my mentor later hmm. um, for uh, recording, you know, in the uh, recording music and so on. Yeah. Um, so we did that demo, and uh, then you know I just kind of a little. I started thinking, oh, recording's kind of fun. Um, and then I, you know, just didn't think too much about it. Just kept playing in the band, and. Um, a few years later, you know, as we did a few more demos and, and of course we all wanted to be rock stars. That was sure. like the ultimate thing. We had to be rock stars. Like, you know, you have to work hard to be a rock star. <laughs> you don't, you don't wait for it to happen. Uh, so we, uh, our band, uh, I guess uh, when we graduated high school, when I graduated from, from Lamar High School in Houston, we decided as a band, uh, well, no, we, we stayed in Houston for a year. That's what it was. We stayed in Houston for a year. The drummer ended up moving to Austin because he got into St. Ed's. And so we were like, oh, we're going to practice every three weeks. And, you know, and this isn't going to be fun. We did that for a year. And then the rest of the band, including myself, moved to Austin. Um, so I, 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 basic, I, I basically went to University of Houston for my freshman year of college. And then when we went to Austin, I, I took some music business courses at Austin Community College. And that was, you know, that was kind of interesting and like fun learning about the, mu you know, the music business other than what I was observing while being in a band. Um, and so I did that for about a, uh, about a year. And, you know, st I started, started thinking, you know, maybe I should start thinking about a, a career in recording along with the band because who knows what's going to happen with the band. And 
then I guess, yeah, two years, you know, after we were in Austin for a year, we moved back to Houston because we found a bass player um, that replaced our longtime bass player that just decided to quit music. He was like, I'm done, you know? So we said, okay. And we found a really good bass player in Houston. So we moved back to Houston. And then at that time, that's when I went, okay, maybe I should, uh, you know, look into some kind of recording program. And then I talked to Brian Garcia, who had recorded us a few times, obviously. And I said, is there, I mean, where did you go? Um, and he was like, well, I actually went to a Houston Community College of Recording. And, and so I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll, I'll check it out. And so I, you know, submitted some information and I got into it and uh, just started recording bands. And, um, you know, I mean, it was a very small studio, but it was, it was a good way to kind of get into it and, and just ease into it and having different courses on MIDI or just, you know, micing te mic techniques and stuff like that. And I really started enjoying it. Uh, so then after that year in, in Houston, we moved back to Austin, <laughs> so it just never stopped. And when we moved to Austin, I decided to get an internship um, in, in, at this studio called Music Lane. Um, and that was really, that was a cool experience because there, you know, we had a big mixing board, an Otari Concept One is what it was called. We had a two inch tape machine, which was very exciting, but also daunting to be, I mean, you know, because the first time I spliced tape, I was like, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> it was terrifying, I, wasn't it? I was, yeah, I was like, uh, you know, my boss is looking at me and I'm going, soldering and splicing tape i don't know if that's my thing i mean that's some you think of, about what we do now with computers yeah. and editing is so much easier oh no kidding you know, that was a uh, so you know so I, I did the internship for about um i did it for about a year and a half and then or yeah maybe a little longer and then uh, while I was doing the internship, I was also going to ACC again and taking some basic courses mm -hmm. that I had already started at U of H a few years back. And then I, I applied to UT for uh, UT film school and got in and I was going, Oh, wow, this is great. I finally got in. So, uh, I, you know, I get my letter of acceptance. I'm excited. And then my best friend, uh, who's the drummer in the band since, you know, we were, what, uh, 12, 13, uh, had just come back from NYU film school. And he, he went to a summer program and he said, you know, we're, we're driving back from, uh, from Houston to Austin. And he goes, Hey, you know, I'm really thinking about shooting a movie on 35. Um, and it'd be great if you were a part of it you know, and, and scored it with me. And I'm going scoring. <laughs> What's that? I mean, we just rock out usually. <laughs> and uh, so scoring and then doing the production sound and doing post sound, all these things. And I was going, well, I mean, you know, production sound, it can't be that difficult. Post sound, we'll see. That's just going to be a journey. I didn't know anything. Um, and uh, so there, it came, I came to a crossroads basically. And we had the loudest camera, which at that time they were just using those for videos. Yeah. So every shot was like. <sighs> <laughs> so it was a great learning experience slash nightmare. And I had to decide, oh, am I going to work on this movie set and maybe potentially start a career? Um, and, you know, the band thing was still going on at that, same, at that time. Or am I going to go to film school. I got accepted. This is exciting. So I had to have a long conversation with my parents, as you can imagine. They were like, uh, I mean, of course, financially, they're like, well, that's great. You know, if you don't go to UT, <laughs> but they're thinking, well, you finally got accepted to this, you know, the UT. And, um, and I said, well, I, I, you know, we, we gotta, we gotta think about this. And finally they said, look, do what you think is, is uh, the best thing right now. You can always go back to school if you feel like in a year it's just not working um so i said okay you know because my parents were really supportive uh my dad wasn't so supportive about the uh music stuff <laughs> but uh he became my biggest fan later which was awesome um 
but um so we so yeah decided to work on the movie with my best bud and we got a whole bunch of friends together and made our our, our first movie I remember the first day of shooting, there was an experienced director of photography on set. And so we're about to roll and I'm behind my gear and, and this gear that we had rented. And he goes, and so they're like, sound ready? And I'm like, yep. And, and he goes, and so they call out, uh, I'm supposed to yell out uh, sound speed, but I didn't know that. So I'm like recording, cause I come from the studio world. You know, and I kept saying that. And at the end of the day, the DP came up to me and goes, Hey man, uh, it's sound speed. Just remember sound speed. I went, okay, cool. <laughs> but it was one of those things where you're like, yeah, I just didn't know. I mean, you know. <laughs> Being on a first time on a film set, there are a thousand things that people don't know. It's, it's a whole different world of vocabularies and protocols and mm -hmm. all these things. It's, I, I, but sounds like you did pretty well, all things considered. Well, yes, all things considered. <laughs> I have to say that was a mountain to climb with the, dealing with the camera. I mean, we had it blimped. We had ferny pads all around it. I mean, it was still going shooting right through the lens. You were shooting and, 35, right? Yeah, 35. Ah, those things are loud. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was loud. But that's the thing, you know, they, it looked, it ended up looking good. Uh -huh. And as far as the sound, um, I learned... You know, there wasn't that much noise reduction plugins back then. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very difficult alongside with not knowing what I was really doing mm -hmm. uh, at the time and learning how to like mask the camera and, and try to get rid of it, uh, you know. And so it was, it was a big challenge and we made it work. I don't know if I, you know, I haven't watched it since... <laughs> It, it went to a few festivals because it actually went to a few festivals. Um, and, but I know there's a lot of stuff missing. Like when we first got our quality check, our QC report from, uh, from LA, it was like a list of missing this, missing that, missing, you know, like fully. I'm, Cause I was thinking it's gotta be as quiet as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing when you don't know all the elements you have to put in as part of the sound design, but they don't have to be loud. They just have to be in for it to be a lush mix, a rich mix. Right. And you're just like, oh no, I want to, you know, it's quiet, quiet. And so, you know, there was like four or five pages, which was ridiculous. And I just freaked out. I was like, oh, we got to add all this stuff. And it was a great learning experience. Mm -hmm. And then after that first movie, I, yeah, we ended up our, our band. And then my, obviously my best friend drummer, who was the drummer in the band, uh, we decided to move to LA. So that was 2000, like the November, 2000, I think. And so we moved to LA and, and my girlfriend at the time, who's my wife now, she moved uh, with me. And then when I got here, we were still scoring a movie called the duo. Um, and we, yeah, we started our, li our little studio in our practice room which, so that was our like first business, I guess you could say, official, non-official business, but it was at, uh, uh, it was at Rock, um, what's it called? It, it, it basically, there was, a, there were like four floors in downtown with 90 something bands. So it was just during the, at night it was super loud, but during the day we could record and I had a little Pro Tools rig and, and we recorded the soundtrack and, uh, you know, and, and we'd play with the band at night and then after that, we ended up, um, this is where, this was the start of music or being in a band and, and how it was becoming less interesting, I guess, because we had been doing it, doing it for so long. And uh, I remember we ended up doing a show during the Sundance Festival, but it was part of Slamdance. Um, and we did a show because we had a song in uh, the movie, What I Like About You, and we redid What I Like About You with some Austin artists and different people. And it, it was kind of like a big ensemble. And when we did the live show in, uh, in uh, Park City, it was packed. I mean, it was like, it was amazing. We had never experienced this. We were used to like 15 people, yeah. Tuesday night in Austin. You know, that kind of stuff, blue, 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 you know. <laughs> $7 in the picture. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So we ended up playing there, and Sean Colvin w was uh, playing after us. 
so she was uh so yeah so austin, uh, austin artist so i you know we got to meet her and all that but it was an amazing night it was like it was like we felt like you know wow people don't know us and they're jumping up and down it was fantastic so that was awesome we were sitting there going wow this is kind of you know it's not that exciting especially in la trying to get gigs was is really hard it's not it's very regional. Austin was a lot easier as far as, you know, it's centralized and all that. And uh, so that kind of became the beginning of the end for the band, I guess. Um, and uh, so, so I kind of leaned more towards doing post sound and recording indie artist. And that's what I did with my, and my buddy, we both, you know, we, we ended up moving from our rehearsal space to another studio in Koreatown in LA and did that for a couple of years. Um, and then uh, I, I got an internship at, at, um, at Brasher Sound. And that's where I, I really learned, like I got to, I, I got my feet wet, let's put it that way. Um, Cause I'll always remember the first day I worked with my boss, John Brasher, he, you know, we're sitting there on stage. It's just me and him and uh, he's like, he's like, okay, write down, we need wallet here. He kept saying wallet, wallet. And I was like, you know, for a while. And then I finally figured out, oh, of course, walla, 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 all the talking in the background. But it just didn't register at the time, you know? And, and, uh, so, um, so I did that for a couple of years and I got to work on a movie called uh, NARC and I was this, uh, the Pro Tools stage editor. And that to this day is still a great movie. And, I, and you know, I was just essentially an intern. I was getting paid very little, but I was an intern. Um, and uh, it was just nice working with a, a director that became pretty successful, Joe Carnahan. Mm -hmm. um, and you know being on stage and and like the main mixers were were sitting there going hey can you move this line you know slip that you know a few frames and all that and uh, it was it was exciting and then the next day i'd be taking the trash out you know <laughs> that was basically it was it was that or making coffee or doing exciting things and i loved it because i got to see got to uh, i was able to experience the all the good things and bad things in post-production because I saw how managers worked and in, in, and how clients were, were collaborating with mixers, you know, and sometimes you see like the, you know, successful collaborations and then you see not so successful collaborations and you trying to figure out, okay, what's going on? What went wrong here? Uh, just because that happens, you, it seems to happen, you know, in, in in any business really mm -hmm. um so i i did that for i worked at that place for a couple of years and then uh that was this is the next crossroads for my career i i i decided that there wasn't that much work for a while i was like you know what i'm gonna see if i can go back to you know uh, like spend basically spend full uh, my uh, full time in the studio uh the studio that my buddy and I started and and just see you know where it takes us um because he was starting to shoot more movies so it was like hey I can do the post sound and and you know I won't be tied to another place to do it uh, of course making this decision I knew that you know I'm I'm in this place there's a potential of getting to work with some bigger mixers and eventually getting to that you know in the union and 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 get you know essentially getting to the top you could say um but that's where i thought that i i was thinking okay what do you want out of life that's basically what i asked myself okay i was like yeah you want success but that's relative you know it's like it's it's, it's subjective it's like well what is success to anybody is it you know fame uh you know tons of Oscars or is it just being busy working? Um, and I decided, look, I'm going to try to go my own route and see what happens and keep and, and stay busy. And at the same time, start a family because that was one of those things I wanted to do. And I remember some of the mixers I worked with at, at uh, Brasher Sound, they would be like, oh, you're getting married. Oh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were like, they, they were giving me a hard time. And I was going, what do you mean exactly? 
And then I kind of got it because of the hours and, you know, not that I don't work many hours these days, but it's, you know, it's, it's tough uh, when you get, when you get to a certain level. And if I would have kind of stuck with some of my buddies that were in, that were working at that studio, uh, I mean, I know by now would have, I would have Emmys. I don't know about Oscars, but Emmys for sure, just because all of them ended up part of a team, you know, to, and, and they ended up, you know, uh, getting Emmys and all that. So that I knew was, I was like, well, if I ever get an Emmy, it'll be through, and it'll take a longer, you know, it'll take longer. Longer but, route. <laughs> longer route, but that's okay. Uh, so, um, well, almost got one, well, not me, but a project I worked on uh, recently. And um, so I decided to just, you know, do the studio with my buddy and, you know, or continue, I should say, continue our, 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 our business or, or, uh, endeavor. And, uh, and, and we moved from Koreatown to West Hollywood. So now we were in a really cool spot on Robertson and Melrose, which mm -hmm. is like just a great, great area. Yeah. And uh, we, we started the studio. It was called Jam Picture, Jam Pictures and Sound. And it was above a restaurant. Um, and luckily the music wasn't loud enough that we would hear it. It was a makeshift studio. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like this, you know, what I have, which is tuned and everything. It was a makeshift and it, it was very cool for music mostly just because of the vibe being in that area. And, and just, you know, it was more of a setup for music, even though I did film, I did post sound there. And I did about 60%. I eventually did about 60% post sound film work there. And then about, you know, and 40 uh, um, producing artists. Um, and, and mostly like I produced, um, it was either for, you know, scoring projects um, where we'd have to do a few pieces or, or, or a full movie. Or it was like with, like I worked with this, this pop or pop or artist called Krasimir Avramov, who's uh, from Bulgaria. And we did an album together. Um, and then I worked with this other artist, LeCat, who was like a contemporary jazz artist. So I got to, you know, record some really, you know, really cool musicians when I did that. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, that was like the music recording portion of my career, I'd say, even though I was doing post sound, because um, I was still, you know, working on movies, but I, I really enjoyed, uh, I think music was still kind of at the top. And then... I finally got to a point where I was, I was sitting there going, well, um, you know, it's producing music is, is, is fun, but it's also very taxing. Like just like mentally compared to post sound, I started noticing like, yeah, post sound it's, I mean, you have deadlines and you have to make things work and sound design and make sure your client, you know, all the clients are happy. But with music, it was, it was like every time you were you were doing something, you knew somebody else had something better. Like you would you'd be like, "It's great," and then you listen on the radio, you're like, "Ah, oh, there it goes." <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? I mean, that's I don't think I mean that's not the way to look at everything, but I that kind of was one of those things where I I I, I was like, okay, well, I'm still gonna do music, but I'm gonna really focus on post sound, which is what I'm still doing today. So it was a good decision, and and then I decided to like you know, to start my own studio, basically convert my garage, which is, this is what it is. Uh, and, you know, I have a bathroom in it and make it totally isolated. And so I don't have to, you know, you, you can't go to the house uh, through a door here. You have to walk outside and, you know, make it a, an office essentially. Mm -hmm. And which was the best decision ever because, you know, it, you know how it is like you work at night and, you're sitting there rendering files or whatever. And, you, and if you're somewhere other than home, you have to babysit, you know, possibly right. you want to check things. So you're sitting there going, no, 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 no. And you want to be home and hang out with family. Cause I, I'm one of those guys who, you know, unlike a lot of my friends likes to be at home at night. Like I don't, I want to be on the couch at night watching TV and talking with my family. Unlike all my other friends that are just, that's when they work. So, so I, I had the studio built which I never thought I would do. 
I, w- I kind of laughed when we got the house. I looked in the garage. I was like, oh, yeah, this has got a good peaked roof. Oh, this would be a good studio. But I was like, yeah, I'm not doing it. And sure enough, a year and a half later <laughs> or two years yeah. later, that's what <laughs> happened. You do it. And, you know, and I, there, I, you know, I was a little scared because I was like, okay, I'm not in Hollywood. I was in West Hollywood before. Now I'm in West Hills, which is like on the edge of L.A. And I'm going, is this going to work out? but I'm going to build a really nice studio. I had this guy, Jerry Steckling, who designed, I got him for a really good deal because it was right after the crisis. Uh, and I asked him, do you do small studios? And he said, yeah. And then, you know, he had done Skywalker Ranch. He worked, he did Snoop Dogg studio. I mean, he's done like so many studios, really nice guy. And I said, well, you, can you do a really nice studio for whatever price? And he ended up, you know, we, we came to a good, uh, compromise on the price and uh yeah and he built the you know my studio as it is today and i'm so happy that it worked out that way i know now it would be way more expensive <laughs> oh yeah I, yeah I got oh i know for sure it would be expensive <laughs> and uh so i built it and you know like i said i was a little scared because i was like is this gonna work out are people gonna drive because la is very like you know, I live here, oh, I don't drive, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. That's just the mentality. Um, and, and, but you know what? It has worked out. People have been coming here. I've been busier than ever since I started the studio um, and working on, you know, working on many movies. And, you know, like we talked about, I've worked on over 100, well, it's like 160 something now, um, you know, features and shorts. So it, it's, you know, it's been, it has been exciting. It's been also stressful because, you know, you have to maintain and it's all about quality for me, not quantity. And the quantity keeps coming, but the quality is paramount because, you know, I mean, it's a once it's like me doing a lot of the work. Uh, I do have my Foley guys, which do the, I hire my Foley guys on all the projects to do footsteps and props such as like, you know, hand rubs, like grabbing chairs or, you know, knocking on doors and stuff like that. And, uh, and other, they do a lot of stuff, but that's kind of like the things that people are, are used to seeing. Or uh-huh. hearing about. Are you, then this brings us pretty much up to the present to this very yes, night. Kind of, isn't it? You know, go fast forward 10 years, but yes. <laughs> well, you've, uh, you mentioned a couple of things that I just, I just, uh, I'm so happy you mentioned because I think they're really important. My wife, has always had a bone to pick with me because she, uh, I met her when she came in to do a job interview. I was for a production company I was, I was doing at the time. And, um, she had, I think it was three hours to go to graduate college. Okay. Uh, and it just so happened that she hit, you know, how it is with the business, you feast or famine. She happened to hit at a time where a huge project had just hit and we have to get the ball rolling. And she had just the right, uh, portfolio. And I said, okay, uh, I, I'd rather offer you the job to come to work. And, you know, and so she had that decision of, oh my, do I continue with my schooling or do I jump into the, jump into the lake? Same as you, you had that same decision. Um, I know that there's some people who say, no, no, I'm going to get my degree first and then I'll, you know, but it's always been my impression that if you've got a big, fat, juicy opportunity sitting in front of you, you probably ought to go ahead and take that chance. I mean, you can always go back to school. That's the thing. You can always go back to school. It's yeah. If there's something that's really enticing and and you have a passion for it. Yeah. You know, do it because if it doesn't work out, you'll see the signs. It'll, it'll be very apparent. You, you shortly, you'll be like, Oh, okay. This is <laughs> just like doing production sound for me was not my thing. Yeah. I did it for yeah. a while and I went, mm, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, I think there's a tremendous amount of pressure on those guys. So I don't, I don't blame you from a, well, but the, the, the whole thing about a, an opportunity is an opportunity and you cannot count on another one coming in two days. It may be two years. Yeah. So um, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because I would always counsel my students to grab that opportunity if it should come around. And I was glad you, you had a perfect example of that. Although my wife and I have made up since then. So it, yeah, it all worked out. So. Um, <laughs> Another thing that you've mentioned that is a common theme with, uh, with people, almost regardless of what field they're in, and that is get serious about doing quality work. Uh, because 
certainly San Antonio is a small town, but Hollywood is a small town when it comes to reputation. Yeah. If you're doing schlock work, you'd be surprised how quickly the well dries up. But if you, you know, if you do, if you do good work, um, I mean, if you really do do your best at every project, I think maybe that has to do with passion too. If you have a passion for the, your craft, you probably have a passion for doing it well, doing it right, trying to take it to a higher level. But I was really happy that you mentioned that about quality because I think that's uh, super important. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a conversation I have with a lot of people uh, because some clients will call me and go, or potential clients will be like, "Hey, can you?" Uh, can you do a mix in three days? You know, and I go, no. <laughs> I, go, I go, I can't physically do that just because I know what it takes to do it right. And I, I always tell them, I don't want to do it. And then whatever I end up doing, which I don't know what I would be doing because that means I have to cut corners everywhere to make that happen. And, and uh, um, you know, and, and then it ends up on the screen and you're like, why did you know you said you would just submit to a festival? So I always tell people, you know, especially I work with a lot of AFI students um, and I, I've been doing that since 2012. And I really enjoy working with on those films. I do maybe like three or four a year. Um, uh, and that's some serious mentorship going on there. Yeah, you know, it's like what's well, you know what we both I get stuff out of it, too. I really yeah. do, it, it, which is great. It's mentorship on, on both ends, believe it or not. And um, and so I always tell them, I, I, you know, I go because there's, you know, they they talk about like, you know, budget. I mean, they usually have nice budgets at the school for short, you know, to work on shorts. But I, I always talk about, you know, a lot of people in this business go, well, there's not, you know, in post production specifically, there's not this much. This they're not paying me this much money. So, you know, I'm just going to do just this amount of work. And I don't agree with that because once it's on the screen, I have never heard anybody in the audience talking about, you know what, did that post sound guy did, uh, get enough money to work on this? Or did you just don't hear that? Like when it's on the screen and it's in the speakers, that's it. What's there is the final product. So if you were like, you know, well, I, if, if you're like, well, I'm, I didn't, I, I didn't do the job because I didn't get a, I wasn't getting enough money. Well, this is, you know, you're going to see it and hear it on the screen. It's, it's going to come through. And it's, I've always thought that's just not, that's not the way to do things. Like if you kind of feel that way, you know, I would say, don't take the job. Very important. Um, but you know, someone may say, well, you need the job. And it's like, well, yeah, you do need the job, but you have to do it well, you know, it's, it's, it's <laughs> well, you know, where we kind of straddle that, that gap or that line between providing a service yeah. and being artists, you know, artists want to do the best they can do. The guys who provide a service, you know, they're looking at their watch. Okay. This is so much per yeah. hour. The, the ones that I know that regard it as a service never really get to the top. They, they may hit somewhere in the middle. They may fool enough people, but they never really, uh, they're not the people you go to when you have a project, you know, has to be good uh, that you want to go with people that, you know, will put a lot into it. So again, quality is just uh, I I inevitably, if you've got the passion, you, you, it's, it's good to go ahead and carry that quality line. And you feel good about it. That's the yeah, thing. You finish yeah. your product project. It may not be the best sound mix ever, but you go, I did the best that I could do. And the clients are happy. That's the thing. If the mm -hmm. director and the producers are happy, you did your job. Mm -hmm. That's it. And yes, your name, ultimately your name will probably be on it to some degree or somehow, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's another good thing about mentorship. Not only can you t help people, help people learn the craft, but learn the ethics and the, the, I don't even know if what we're talking about is in the realm of ethics or something else, but it is, at least as important as your talent is your, your attitude from what I, Oh, attitude is experience. very important. Very important. Maybe yeah. more than talent. You know, I, 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 I don't know. It's a tie. I suppose. You're a lot. There's a lot of, Oh, you know, he's giving us a hard time. She's giving it, you know, I mean, you hear that so much, you know, and that's it. I won't say anything else, <laughs> but you hear that so much and you just go, yeah, I know because a lot of people are jaded, uh, you know, uh, over time from working, you, they're doing it nonstop and, and, you know, that kind of brings me actually to this topic. 
is burnout. Uh, which, you know, is, is I think something, it's a very important thing to become aware of um, because I, I don't get totally burned out if I'm working a lot, but I get close, like where I need a vacation. I need, I just need to do something different, you know? Um, but there are signs, you know, it's, it's like, if you, if you end up, if you're nice and busy, it's, it's wonderful and you want to keep the quality up, but if you can't keep the quality up, if you're not there, like if you become a robot, uh, which does happen, sometimes you get it, you know, after a 10 hour day and you're still working with people, you become a robot at that time. It's hard to be creative. Well, it, I think it may be important to, to interject here. I've worked in, in several recording studios uh -huh. where the recordist, the individual doing it says, I have to step away. My ears are dead. In other words, he, he's been doing it and listening to it for so many hours that he's lost that ability to come in fresh and to hear it fresh. Yeah. And you're really doing a disservice to you and your client if you're soldiering through, even after the point where your, your brain has said, no, nah, I'm done, I'm done. Yeah. You have to give yourself some replenish time, you know? And you'll hear it the next day. That's the thing. You know, once Boy, you will you. first thing the next day, you'll go, huh? <laughs> Was that me? What, yeah. What were we thinking? Because what happens <laughs> over time, especially like with post out with music for sure, because you end up turning it up loud and all that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but with post sound, I mean, it, it can get loud. If I'm working on a movie that's got, uh, you know, some big moments, loud music, by the end of the day, you know, everything sounds lower as, mm -hmm. a, as a global you know, sound, a mix. So mm -hmm. sometimes you keep pushing. That's when you have to like check meters and go, oh, okay, wait, wait, hold on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't really, more. I don't really know the equivalent to audio work because, you know, even in animation, you can look at the drawings or looking at what you're doing all day long. You don't get that sense of, of gray where you yeah. do with audio for some reason, I, it may be, it's just me, but for some reason, if I'm in an audio bay for a long time, my ears just get fatigued. That's probably the word for it is fatigue. Yeah. No, you get, your ears absolutely get fatigued and you know, it's like a combination. You get fatigued and also you're collaborating. So yes. you're like, there's a lot of talking going on. You're, you're, you're discussing things. So it's this collaboration and then you're working nonstop because you don't, it's not like you, you take that many breaks. At least I don't other than like we go out to eat or go to the bathroom. That's pretty much it. Um, you know, so it's, yeah, it can get, your ears can get fatigued and, you know, let's say you do that nonstop and, and work long hours, you'll get burned out. I had an intern um, that when I had a studio in West Hollywood, super talented guy, but I would leave you know, around seven or eight at night. And then he'd still be there the next day working. I was like telling him, I was like, you have to, not all the time, but he would do this a lot. And he's like, I'm good. I slept two hours. I'm good. And you're on the couch and I'm going, oh. I go, you're going to get burned out. Just, it's going to happen. And sure enough, after a year and a half, he quit. Oh <laughs> he quit no. The, the business. And he was talented, but he was like, he's like, I want to do something different. But that's the thing. You can't go. You don't want to go full, full on. I mean, you want to be there working and be consistent, but you don't want to go. You, you don't want to be like, if I don't work, I'm going to feel guilty. I'm not going to get enough done. And, you know, the clients are going to be happy. That's that's a, that's something we all feel, I think. You yeah, know? you've got to have that throttle in the artistic realm, especially, I think, uh, to, to do that. You'd mentioned another thing several times in this conversation, which I'm delighted that you have the word intern and what it means, um, you know, like we talked about earlier, that take that opportunity. I can't think of a better, unless your, your dad owns the studio or something, yeah. or your uncle, I can't think of a better way to get your foot in the door than an internship. Uh, maybe uh, in the case of motion picture production, a, pr a production assistant is kind of maybe a little bit, a, a step ahead, uh, but slightly. But internship is nice because you can make those mistakes because you're the intern and, and no one's going to hold a gun to your head. I mean, you, you better not do something totally stupid, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you'd mentioned that you'd, you'd, uh, you'd had an internship and, in, uh, and you in turn have had interns. Can you talk a little about that? Uh, the first thing is don't ever bring tuna to a studio. That's all I have to say. Cause I got, I brought tuna. And that was it. My, I, the boss was walking around and Brasher was like, who brought the tuna? <laughs> And I was like, yeah, don't ever do that. That's the, that's the first piece of advice. But anyway, uh, internship, 
it's just what's exciting is that you know yes you have to like i mean you're doing a variety of things it's never like a focused thing uh a day-to-day thing but you get to be a fly on the wall you know a lot of times and the one thing to remember is to always be that fly on the wall and just and when you're asked to do something do it you don't have to give your opinion or like a million other you know you know what i mean like if you start engaging too much sometimes people start looking like you know yeah i've seen that happen many times when i would work at the studio and there'll be other interns and it'd be like and they, they would sh- they try to show how much they know you want to show how much you know but not interject into the 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 you know the kings on stage i guess you could say <laughs> uh, it's it's one of those things it's like you know there's a hierarchy and especially in the, in the film business and you just want to be like you want to soak it in because that's really what you're there for soaking it in and then learning the the things you you wish that you don't want to end up doing later the, and make the mistakes or the things you're like you know what i think this is a this is good. I like the way they're interacting with this client, or I like this. I like doing Foley or I, I like working in the machine room, um, you know, or just editing effects and sound designing. I mean, you just kind of discover what you want to do uh, by interning. So I think it's very important to intern if you get the opportunity. Yeah. Because very often you may go into an internship thinking that job is something altogether different from what it turns out to be. That can be good or it also can be bad, but uh, yeah, you can learn what you love by, by doing it. The other thing too, that's nice is in addition to the job itself, how to push the buttons, mm-hmm. you really get a good sense of how the, how the vibe of the place, how something where how people get along with people, how they negotiate, how they, uh, all of the ins and outs of how to work in a studio and how to get along with people. And it's just invaluable. The only yeah. Bad thing is that not all internships are paid internships, no, uh, but no. it, you know, if you can afford to do an internship, find a way, do it. Cause that's a, and, and like you say, never say no, just say, I'll take, I'll do it. I'll take, you know, I'll take yeah. care of it. You know, I love just, the, just, the can do people, you know, and if you have an issue, obviously, I, you know, you can't figure something out. That's when you bring it up, but you just, yeah. you just go for it and go, I'm there. I'm on, I'm on it. I'm on it. That's it, man. That's that, those are the people that eventually catch on the fastest and go the farthest. I would I would say. You had in your endless list on your IMDb, you had a you think it's 160 so titles you've worked on. 72 of those credits were for sound design. And could you give the students a little talk about the difference between composing music and sound design? Well, composing music they all have a huge part in, in the, the uh, in, as far as, you know, the, the overall soundtrack of a film that's, you know, including dialogue and background ambience and, you know, creative sound design, what I like to call. Um, and so the difference, I mean, they kind of work together is, is, is a way to, you know, they, they complement each other because, I've noticed when I've done sound design work uh, on any movie, when I get the music, that's when I'm most excited. You know, if the music, if the score is excellent, wow. It just brings up, you know, the level, the movie to another level. And what you have to figure out in some of the bigger sound design and scoring sequences is how to work everything together and which frequencies are going to pop out. It's like a dance between both of them. Um, you know, between like the, the bigger sounds and, and then the bigger stingers for music. Um, does so, one usually precede the other or do they, does it vary from every project? That's on the scene. It really depends on the scene. And, uh, you know, like I worked on this one movie, The Great Alaskan Race, and we had the whole movie was supposed to be a build like a storm that was building oh, line, so go, go. every scene you should feel whether you were inside or outside things building so that was challenging but also fun because then it became like then we had the big storm uh so it's like you know putting all these elements together and um you know it, you know like building up the wind making it feel young girl has died like it's it's you know something's 
daunting and coming, you know, essentially. Um, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's with that and then having an, you know, that movie had a really amazing score, um, the, a really, like, composer, and it was one of those epic type scores. So if you have that and you have big sound effects, as a sound guy, that's really a perfect mix. You know, as a sound a, a designer or mixer. In my case, it's I'm mixing and sound designing. And with a stone age solution. So, by sound design, you're really you're really developing the. Is it fair to say the atmosphere, the environment of the sound for the picture? Is that close to the mark? Yeah, you're developing the 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 mood with the backgrounds that you 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 place in you know in the surrounds and. Um, in the center channel and and yeah you you, you create a mood it's like it, it, you'll, you'll hear this in a lot of movies when they want to make things you know uh, seem very claustrophobic like all of a sudden the backgrounds will just start you don't notice them but they they kind of go down especially in horror movies um and and then it's now, are you saying in terms of volume, or they're moving to the lower frequencies? Well, no, a volume, or it could be more muffled, and 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 then maybe the score picks up. Things like that. It's it's like the calm before the storm, and those are tricks to use to kind of get people to, you know, get comfortable or uneasy, depending on what the situation is. Uh, so those are discussions we have all the time with clients. It's like, what do we want to do here? How do we want to make the the viewer feel? And so yeah, with sound design, you're creating and music you're creating a mood because i can tell you this almost every movie i've worked on when i've gotten the score there's at least one or two cues in that go wow i'm actually this scene it feels completely different now it's the same scene i've been used to working on for six weeks or however long but now i'm like i love what i'm feeling but i never felt this before but it's the huh. same thing same everything same backgrounds i had and sound effects and all that but because of the music, I feel this new, well, this new enjoyment, and I'm going, wow, I never thought about it this way. And of course, there's a lot of predictable scenes as well, but there are a few in almost every movie where you go, huh, okay, that was the composer's take, and that was cool. It's also part of your job to sort of work in the spaces around the music so that you aren't competing with, but rather you're, you and this, you and the music are like two guys in a phone booth, you know, you're figuring out how to, yeah, how like, to work together. So turn, that it sounds that's good. My turn. It's your turn. That's my turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but sometimes the music supports what you do and sometimes you're supporting what the music does. I'm sure. So. And uh, yeah, because it's, it's uh, yeah, they, that's what I, they always, most of the time they complement each other. And um, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's really the most exciting part for me um, other than, you know, sound designing, which for me is kind of like the whole process, uh, you know, and is, is the, when you get to mixing and you have the score and, and you, it become, it feels like a movie all of a sudden, you know, mm -hmm. you're like, this is what we worked for. We spent all that time on the ADR because there were some rough patches here and there. And, you know, that's always scary when you're like, oh, I want to make sure the ADR doesn't pop out. But as a sound guy, you can pick out almost any ADR in any movie. So that's you just have to deal with that fact. Um, and, you know, mixing is, uh, yeah, that's the most exciting, I think, at the end of the day, mixing all the sound elements. Uh, but keeping in mind that, you know, in my case, I'm mixing as I go. So every time I open up my Pro Tools session, I'm always mixing. So it's always like, what are we doing today? You know, we're, we're doing, we're doing uh, the backgrounds. Oh, I'm getting the Foley from my Foley guys. We're going to mix that in. And he starts, you know, it piles on top and mm -hmm. it starts sounding fuller and, and richer. And it's, and then the music is the icing on the cake. Well, the students, uh, we've done a, 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 a section on Foley's. They, they are, they are very familiar with Foley art, seen several documentaries on it. Yeah. Um, one thing I'm curious about uh, one of the, I guess one could call it one of the instruments that you use to create what you create are sound effects. Yes. Uh, and, and guys like you generally have their own library that they've created of, with their own microphones and, yeah. and, and, and you, and I'm sure you have licensed purchased library. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Uh, plenty of that. Collections as well. Yeah. Uh, but um, when, when you, okay, somebody says, I need the sound of a, of a 1920s trolley car. Uh, do you go to like to sound dogs or where do you go to just find something that, you know, you can pick up for $17 or something? Well, you go, you go, I use, uh, there's a, a few sites. Uh, I go to this one site called a sound effect 
and they have a lot. I've found some really good sound effects libraries and uh, for, you know, anything really. And then Boom is another great one. It's more expensive, but it's really good. Um, and then as far as my day-to-day, -day, other than the, the, li the huge library I have that I've acquired over the years from other sound guys, I mean, it's just like you work in a place, especially when I worked at a at a, another post facility you end up like going hey i'll give you my four gigs of sound effects you give me my you know stuff like uh, that hey, yeah sure stop? will you do this job for three gigs <laughs> 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 whatever this the case may be and uh they become so, currency <laughs> yeah there there you go no it happened a couple times um especially when i wasn't making that much interning um and uh the other site um so yeah so there's a sound effects um boom library and soundly which is one that came out uh, yeah, probably a few years back and i ended up somehow seeing it online and it was I, I was it was like the beta version and what this library does is people contribute contribute ah. and and a lot of good good sounds i mean there's some that are like okay but for the most part it's a go-to a day-to-day -day go to because it's easy and accessible the problem with some other libraries is that you have to go on their site, listen to them, and download them. This one works with your workstation, your, your digital audio workstation. So let's say you go, I, I want a whoosh. So you go and you're like, I want a specific whoosh. You audition all these whooshes on the interface. And you're like, I like that one. And you see it and you just literally select it, start to finish, grab it, boom, drop it in your session. And it, in, it's instantly there. That was a game changer as far as quick, you know, accessibility to sound yeah. effects, because I can't tell you, you know, before it's like, okay, I got to search through this. I th think soundly and a lot of editors use that, not sound editors, but uh, like picture editors. I mm -hmm. started like telling everybody about it when I, I was, I got on it because it was towards the beginning and I was like, you should get it. I mean, it's just a great tool for anybody who wants sound effects. You'll get, there's a lot of good stuff. And, and when I want really specific things, like, like when I was working on the, uh, the, the, the big storm sequence in that movie, The Great Alaskan Race, I, you know, I ended up finding an amazing library on a sound effects with like, you know, big rock, uh, like ice breaking and stuff like that, because we had all these, you know, ice breaking and stuff. And, and it was, it was mixing all those things together and finding the right, you know, sub and, 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 and like, how do you bring it in so it sounds like it's really part of the world you're seeing? That was really exciting. And I found it on a sound effect. Going back to your, your point about a lot of sound, I feel like most sound designers that end up doing, creating their own sounds are usually, it's usually on projects where there's a nice budget. You know, it's usually the case where they can, they, you have the time to do it. You're never, because, uh, you know, in my case, most of the time, it's like, you know, we have this, we have to get it, we have to submit to this festival, or we have a, distri a distribution deal on the table, they're waiting, and we've, we're waiting on VFX, or whatever the case may be, but we've got to get started on sound. So, you know, they're, they're, you're kind of like, well, I don't have time to create all this, because by the time I create three sounds, I could be well into the movie. Or, and then for, the, I see also sound design as like the art of sound editing, the mixing, the using, you know, using plugins and distorting sounds and, you know, reversing things and pitch shifting things. So you, essentially my digital audio workstation Pro Tools is, is the extension. That's like my extension uh, as far as it's my tool for creating. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's just, you know, there's a few ways to go about it. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, because I've had some some uh, some younger sound guys ask, you know, like, oh yeah, I'm not I'm not using the board at all, and I go I go okay, well yes, for show it's nice if you're sitting there and using the board, yes, <laughs> that might be good for show. But I go, remember, if it sounds good at the end, they'll hire you again. <laughs> you know, true. If you did a yeah. good job, <laughs> we'll hire you again. They, you know, you can still move the faders; they'll be fine. Well, you've um. Uh, I would love for you to tell us, I'd love to show the, the students some of your work uh, and, and, and let them hear a little bit of your, 
see see your chops. Do you have some projects that you uh, that you feel particularly for whatever reason uh, were what you wanted them to be that you feel good about telling us about? So maybe we can have them listen to some of these. Well, there's there yeah there's uh it's it's like most sound guys because this is a this is a, a question yo know, if you ask any post sound person about yeah what's your favorite movie and all that and the, it always start with well I liked what I did there but I the dialogue was okay you know <laughs> this is, there's always that or it may have been fine you know but there's a lot of that well but there's excuses yes it's like, well, right this moment's great and all that so yeah there's definitely some moments um but you know like uh, i just finished uh, a movie called the gin that's going to be on ifc midnight and it might be in some theaters um select theaters i don't know where exactly because of covid and all that but uh you know it's it's the music was so cool in there and it's a it's a really it's a bone chilling type thriller and it's not out yet obviously but there's some really good moments um you know, where it's like, it gets you, you know, that's one. And then to mention that other movie, Great Alaskan Race, that movie, I think from start to finish sound wise, you know, was, I'm, I'm proud of that one because it felt like, especially when we watched it at the premiere, um, you know, it was nice and loud. It was, you know, it was a huge theater in Hollywood and it felt huge. And I was very, you know, it's not all the time that you can walk out and go, you know, I'm, I think it turned out really well. And then there's a, a fun movie I worked on uh, that, had, you know, it's, it's a comedy, but it's also like a thriller uh, called Useless Humans that came out last summer. Um, and, you know, that, that was definitely a fun, we had a lot of fun because we, we, ex, we, we use this plugin dehumanizer to, 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 which helps you do creature voices so we had to create this like kind of you know monstery type voice for this alien and so the director ended up going in there and he was like he you know we we just experimented and and i was like pushing buttons we were talking trying to get the right thing and, and that was a lot of fun that was a lot of fun to to work on there's another one what there's only one what do you mean they're all over the damn place it's all over the damn place. It can teleport. Oh, it's not so bad. This one alien. It can teleport. Yeah. Maybe we need to rethink this entire thing. <laughs> Thing's gonna pop up at any. Don't scare! <laughs> uh, and I've also worked on movies that are, you know, they're super moving and 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 like, but they don't have a set. I mean, you create what you're proud of for those movies is you create the world. Like mm -hmm. I worked on a movie called The Illegal um, that came out in, in uh, December. And it's actually part of the very, very extensive o Oscar eligible, eligible, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't even talk right now. <laughs> it's eligible for the Oscars. <laughs> Jeez, cut that out. I'll cut that out. <laughs> yeah, cut that out. Uh, so that was on the list last week. Uh, there's a lot of movies, but it, it's a very moving movie and uh, a moving uh, a film. And, you know, it's, it's, it go it's in the U S and it's also in, in India. So, uh, you know, it, you had to create the, the world in India and wow. it, it's not like it's some, it's, does not have all these like huge sound effects and all that, but it's creating the world. So it's so mm -hmm. in a more subtle way, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's very important uh, sure. because the quieter moments are almost the hardest moments. Mm -hmm. um to, to to really like i mean they may not may not take as long but they're, they might be the hardest moments to to really achieve uh, uh to really get to, to to really knock that that the right mood uh for the viewer so that movie yeah that movie um 
I, I, I like that movie, you know, because I was able to kind of do the whole like going from India to US to LA back and forth. Uh, and, you know, you have subtleties that, that really make you feel like you're in different, two different places. Son, why, why do you want to be a filmmaker? I think it's the only medium where I feel like I can express myself. I, I really like the to take my emotions and my feelings and put them up on screen. Why would you get into such a great school and choose to study something with no real chance of a job? You can still stay here until you make some arrangement. You're a really talented guy. If anybody can make it happen, it's you. You're a fighter! Just don't tell mommy where I work. Huh? Where are you from? Um, I'm from Daryaganj. Oh, it's in India. How are you like in LA? Work and everything is. You don't get to see much. You know, you're really brave. Just leave home and it takes real courage. Come here and beg and steal. You come here again, I'm calling the cops. Take some time off. Go back to India, maybe. Sort out your financial things and come back when you're ready. What's gotten into you? Stop thinking you can save me. For some of us, it's just that. A journey we can only look at from a wide shot. But I do have a, <laughs> one question. Um, yeah. Have you had any experience doing computer games or is it primarily or exclusively I, been motion pictures? The first, first ever audio gig that was when I was living in Austin was for Origin. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I did. Now, it was, it was through... Um, um, a sound designer, or I guess a sound editor I was working with at Music Lane Studios, mm -hmm. the guy who brought me Pro Tools for the first time. And I was like, whoa, things are about to change. Um, so I ended up um, doing dialogue editing on, I forgot the name of the game, but that's, pr that's pretty much it. I thought about getting into it and then I've gone, well, I mean, I'm already really busy with film and I really enjoy what I'm doing. Uh, now the dialogue editor that works for me, she does a lot of dialogue editing for games and stuff mm -hmm. it's it's just not something that i'm looking to do but if it ever worked out it'd be great but it's it's not i'm not like you know looking out to looking to get yeah. to start working on it i was just curious because some of the students have an interest in games and now that games clearly are making <laughs> pretty big inroads in fact uh with covid happening it seems like uh, films have sort of hit a plateau uh, i i don't know i'm hoping that film can re rebound entirely but it has been really tough on you know distributing is a is a mess right now and and so yeah. getting your money back out of a film has well, become a challenge money, people want content i mean yes. the amount of movies i've had to deliver in the last few months that i've worked on all of a sudden it's everybody's like we have to deliver because yeah. they want content but yeah, as far as the financial aspect, I don't know. It's and, and kind of, it's different. The last three advi uh, things mentioned, advice for those coming into the business, secrets for success, pitfalls to avoid, and final word to students. So we've covered many of these, but you may have a few more nuggets that you would want to mention. Um, well, it all, be, it all starts with if you have passion, you know, for what you're doing, that's great. I mean, that's like the key. That's what I tell my kids. Whenever you get that passion, you know, that's what, that's what you're, you know, that's you the have, life force. Right? That, that's the life force forever yeah. because you're always going to dabble in different things and like, Oh, maybe I like that. And you know, but if once you have the passion and you, you know, it go for it, there's no reason not to go for it. Um, and then one of, you know, the most important things for me is balance is balance between family and work. Uh, because it's very, very, very easy to get caught up in working too much, especially in entertainment. 
because, you know, you get excited and people have deadlines and, you know, some deadlines are unrealistic. <laughs> you know, they're self-imposed <laughs> deadlines. Some of them are realistic. If you're working on a TV show, it's every week and you have to get it done. But you will inevitably be pushed. There's just no way. Oh, yeah, you will. And, and you will be pushed to the limit and you might you might get burned out that way. So my thing I've always been. Um, as I'm working, you know, as I've been working what as a post sound guy uh, for what 23 so, uh, years, but as, with sound, I mean, officially for a little bit longer than that. And I've always said I want a family, and I have to remind myself when, you know, I I'm working too much or I get in robotic mode because I have to get all this stuff done. That it's like, you got you got to kind of figure out, refocus, and go okay, where can I change? Obviously you can't do it that day, but start thinking in the next couple of months, how can I get back to how I know works best for my sanity and, you know, for my family and for work to, to be more energized going into work and doing better work really and, and, and making it not as hard because you're like so tired mentally, not so much, you know, I get plenty of sleep, uh, but it's just the mental aspect. Cause you can get plenty of sleep, but just be exhausted mentally because you're just, it's a lot of stuff dealing, you know, working with a director and a producer, you know, every day on a project and it's, and, and you're collaborating, it's exciting, but it's a lot of, of, of things to pay attention to um, and to deal with. So balance is like with any job, it's key for me. It's definitely key. If you want to, you know, it's about longevity for, for me, you know, I want to make sure I'm still doing this for a long time and not be like, well, I'm over this. And I, which I know a couple people, you know, other than the intern I mentioned that, you know, especially in the music business, they're like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Cause they were working for some big producer uh, that we all know, but we won't talk about <laughs> and yeah. that, that, that was like pushing them to the limit. Kind of Cause you know, not just mentally, I've known people that physically their bodies couldn't hold up. It's yeah. a very talented people that oh. can't do it anymore because they just, yeah. They, they get chewed up. So it can yeah, happen. It, that's the thing. It's a, I, I remember, uh, yeah, yeah. I got to a point like it was, a, it was like in eight or nine, it was a very, well, that, that's when the crash happened. And also like my dad had passed away and we had our second daughter. We had just moved into the house and I was working a lot. That was a lot. You know, it was very taxing. And I went to my doctor and he goes, uh, he goes, wow, you're worn out. I can see it. Like I can, it's not, it's wants to really get your energy back. And I was still like, you know, laughing and stuff like that, but I was like, I'm just tired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. not tired from no sleep. I'm just tired. Yeah. And he's like, you got, you have to recharge your batteries. And since you can't take time off or, you know, you can't take three months off, you have to gradually get back into it. Mm -hmm. um, so since I, I thankfully am working pretty consistently uh i have to remind myself that i don't get those three weeks off from project to project that i have to keep it going but i have to make sure that it, the quality is there so i can't overdo it i'm gonna overdo it just a little bit but not too much and uh yeah just, okay that's well, uh, you know what? I think we've hit everything. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you've noticed, I've been grinning most of the way through this thing. I'm just so happy that my students are going to get to hear this. Uh, you are a delight. I, I man, you ought to be on camera. This is a, this is one of the better, better interviews for sure I've had. And I can't, <laughs> well, I can't you. thank you enough, Will. You are uh, way beyond my expectations. And I thought it'd be pretty good. Becky said you were a, you're a wonderful fellow. And I'm, I really appreciate it. And you did mention one thing earlier about mentorship and about giving back. And this is an opportunity for people who've reached the level of, of excellence in their careers like you. I, I really admire those guys that are willing to give back, you know, to, to take that time that you spent what a couple of hours so far uh, on behalf of me and my students. And I just want to you're thank welcome. you for it. It's a, a very a, a wonderful thing that you're doing for, for me and, and for my class and, and for the industry too. So Will, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much and good job, man. Way to go. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great take weekend. Care. Thank you for your time so much. All right. Bye-bye, Will.